Look out, Hollywood. Our phones are shooting cinematic video. You've probably already been a part of the smartphone era of cinematic video, basically just taking the same sort of software processing that we see for portrait modes, where we can blur the backgrounds of our video with software, uh, and applying that to the moving pictures. This is so early for covering the Pixel 7 Pro. I got it last night, set it up, it ran some performance tests last night, and this is the first morning I've had to shoot with this camera from this exact same position here. Now I've got the speech processing enabled. There's definitely some traffic happening. I'm, I'm at a park and people are driving on this road and there's sort of a lawnmower way off in the distance. So we just kind of want to get a sense, like what does this change up? What do we see? How does this look different than you know the, the software process background? I've always thought it was kind of funny that that's the main differentiator that we label for cinematic. I don't really think shooting cinematic just means making the background as blurry as possible. Really, shooting cinematic means you've got control over the frame that you're trying to create. So if you want a frame with a really long depth of field, that's just as cinematic as a frame with a super, super shallow depth of field. I've always been really anxious using these software processing modes because the effect is baked in hard to the final output. And, and even when they do a really good job, like for example, I like to wear hats. So I'm moving around and you can see how it's trying to track my face and figure out what's happening behind me. And, and genuinely, I think the phone is doing a pretty good job of handling that kind of computational frame to frame stitching and cutting. But for those times where it kind of gets it wrong or the effect doesn't quite land, that looks really distracting. There's no way to really pull that effect back once it's once it's baked in there. When instead we're in this beautiful era of larger camera sensors. Last year we really saw these 1 over 1.3 inch sensors take off. Not only Galaxy Ultras, but also uh, Sony Pro-i, the Pixel 6 Pro, the Vivos, and now this year stepping up to, to ridiculously large one-inch sensors from Sharp and Xiaomi, you get a more natural focus fall off when you go with a bigger sensor. It doesn't quite hyper-isolate your subject as much, but I'm still being kind of pulled from the background, and, and I think this still looks really nice. <laughs> I'm surrounded on three sides with different landscapers so apologies if you're picking up like uh there's a weed whacker there's a leaf blower there's a lawnmower my apologies this could also be a pretty good uh test for microphone clarity and performance the question that comes up when we talk about like what makes for a better photo or what makes for a better video all of these are deeply personal everyone's gonna have a different answer for what it is that they care about some people get really hyper fixated on resolution and clarity some people are really looking for color and white balance some people are looking for other intangibles the feel the emotional quality of what goes into a piece of media so you know, trying to accomplish something more cinematic is is an interesting challenge i'm really happy to see these companies trying to improve on how small these sensors really are in comparison to larger cameras and we know that there's a ton of advanced processing and innovation this is where all of the future r d is going to go first but it's that battle that's what really gets me lit up how do we overcome physics how do we maybe manipulate an image in a really interesting way to, to better give us those capabilities and that control? So the cinematic video is, is a fun effect to play with. It's not one I think I'm gonna lean on particularly hard because of my previously mentioned concerns over having that control and creating the image that I want to create. But it's another tool in the arsenal. It helps democratize video production for smartphone content creators, or even just to spruce up your own family, you know, photos and videos, that is a, a nice capability. I don't want to dismiss the incredible work that goes into this type of photo and video management. It's just, I like to talk about these types of features in that context of right tool for the right job. Because I just, I really hate that feeling. Especially when you're trying to rely on them in a moment. You know, you can't really recreate a moment. And I'm such a one of the few f kinds of photography I actually think I'm pretty good at is candid photography. So that's exactly the wrong place to try and rely on a feature like this because if you don't nail it or if the, the software editing doesn't quite stick the landing on that moment, you can't undo it and then you can't recreate that moment. So those times that I really do try to rely on a portrait mode or a cinema video mode, 
very, very limited and controlled opportunities, which is hilarious. You know, like if I know I can set this moment and I'll have multiple tries to make sure I get it right, then that's that's a good time to use a portrait mode. That's a really good time to use a cinema video mode, which in a really hilarious kind of roundabout way is exactly what cinema shooting kind of should be. Cinema is about controlling the look to achieve the exact aesthetic that you see in your mind. It's not the fastest running gun or you can always count on it or this is gonna make all of your videos just magically easy, easily betterer. It's I've got something that I wanna accomplish and I'm gonna use this one tool or this one feature to produce what I see in my brain. A really funny little tip or trick for you folks out there who might be uh, you know, considering picking up a, a Pixel 7 Pro, um, the, the telephoto sensor has its own little circular cutout. And so I really need to find a good clear bumper because I don't wanna lose the reflective backplate on the Pixel 7 Pro. But if you line up the telephoto sensor kind of around where your nose is on the reflection of the phone, it's a really easy way to frame a good like head and shoulders shot when you're shooting kind of with the phone out at arm's length. Exactly the pro tier kind of coverage you expect from uh, from some gadget guy. It's uh, so some pro tips for you. This is super early, early, early commentary on the Pixel 7 Pro. And it's one of these things that with software, especially from Google, we always expect these, uh, these modes and features are going to improve over time. And Google's got a really good track record of sprucing this stuff up. These early results are very encouraging. I like what I see, though I know for myself personally, this isn't gonna be effect to lean on heavy. I think it's gonna be something a lot of fun, a lot of people are gonna have fun with, especially as we've seen from galaxies and iPhones. So we're gonna have a lot more to say about Pixel 7 Pro. Would have been nice if I could have spent some more time with it before the embargo lifted to give you guys some more in-depth coverage. But now that we're here, we can hit the ground running. We'll try and get some fun stuff out. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing, for supporting this channel. If you're hitting the description below or if you're hitting my my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list name scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.